So this is a very weird and almost debatable integral to see if it actually has an answer, but in this case, we're gonna find a answer. And we're gonna do that by introducing a parameter, e to the negative tx, um, with this integral. And we're going to now apply a Laplace transformation because there is actually a, a transformation that makes our lives a lot easier. In this case, our a will just be our variable t and our b will just be one. So our i of t is now just rewritten to be t over t squared plus one and i of zero, which is our original integral, right? Because the e to the negative zero is just we can now solve that by taking the limit as t goes to zero of our transformation. And you're gonna know, notice that it's gonna become zero. And you can check this with Desmos and all kinds of tools. So our integral is really zero. And you can debate this result, but we're gonna keep this for the video. And we're gonna even take another look at a different integral that we've already covered in our Feynman's tri uh, trick video. And we're going to introduce the same parameter to solve it, e to the negative tx. And you know, now we're going to you know differentiate under the integral sign, do a series of steps using integration by parts, doing some basic integrals, get a arctan um, function, and our answer will just be pi over two. Now, this is a fascinating result, but that's not what this video is about. What we're concerned with is why did we introduce this parameter? I mean, who thought to introduce e to the negative tx? And to answer that question, it's important to look at what's going on with the function graphically. Let's just take a random function cosine x, very simple, what we're dealing with earlier, and let's apply that e to the negative tx term, which is valid for positive values of t, and notice what happens to the values of cosine as x goes to infinity. It's being suppressed. And in fact, it's gonna force cosine x to converge. The function e to the negative tx is suppressing the oscillations and quite literally, it's forcing cosine to converge. So a good way to visualize this and just play around is using Desmos. And you're gonna notice, right, and let's, you know, these are the two functions, cosine and sine. And let me zoom into them a little bit closer here. Um, and, you know, pretty standard, right? And what we're going to do is we're gonna take our, you know, we have our e to the negative tx term with our parameter t. And of course, you know, what's going on here is as you're making t, zoom out as you're making a t bigger and bigger you see how the right is getting more suppressed while the left is bending and going crazier and basically stretching out far and far and you can see that to the point where these are basically just they look like lines and of course we could do the other thing where we make it negative and then it's going to turn into something else but you get the idea here. And the idea is that if you have a function e to the negative x, let's just take a look at that for right now. Notice how there's a certain kind of, well, let's just say pattern or shape about this that, you know, that makes sense for what's going on. You see as e to the ne uh, negative x is going all the way to infinity, um, the values are approaching a horizontal asymptote, and of course exponential functions have such an asymptote. And this property is now being translated to our functions, where for positive values of t, they're starting to suppress our functions to, to something where it, basically it converges. And this is why when we introduce these parameters, where this parameter called the, well, there's a lot of names for it. You could say it's like the suppressor, the dampener. Um, you see how powerful it is in making the function as it goes out wider and wider on the domain. It's making it very, um, very linear as you get further and further out. 
and thus that that allows us to now integrate them on an infinite interval and the best part is is that because there's a negative exponent here it, it, it's really allowing us to abuse the fact that improper integrals are now you know they're going to converge because at infinity a decaying exponential has a finite sum where it converges to and so this is really just a great way to test it out and have some fun with it you know take a look at what's going on with these functions it's really interesting